Good morning all. This is the PWM5 solar charge controller which started life as an electronics project but then became a product and I was manufacturing this and selling it for about four years. And then about a year ago I stopped manufacturing it for various reasons, one of which was because it's very time consuming to assemble and I wanted to spend more time on my YouTube channel. So now what I want to do is to return the PWM5 to its original project status. Uh, here are some early prototypes of the design. Um, specifically, I want to make it an open source project. So I'm going to publish the contents of the microcontroller here. Now, for a long time, of course, the contents of this microcontroller have been a secret, a commercial secret. And in fact, I switched on the code protect bit, which means that even if you take the microcontroller out of this unit, you won't be able to read the code. So I kind of thought, why not, as well as making the uh, source code public, revealing that secret, why don't I reveal all the other secrets? Like, did this unit make any money? Did it make me rich? And uh, is it reliable? How many were sent back to me? How many did I have to refund? Did I make any mistakes during the design process? And is there anything that I would have chosen to do differently uh, in hindsight? And in fact, is there anything in this code that could actually be modified to improve the design even at this late stage? But for this first video, I thought I'd concentrate on what was my inspiration for the PWM5? Where did I get my initial ideas from? Why did I desi uh, decide to include certain features and leave others out? And so on. So I've come outside and I've hooked uh, one of these controllers up to my big car battery and I'm monitoring the voltage there. Uh, there's not a lot of sun today, but the voltage of the battery is creeping up gradually, 13.39. Now one of the features of the PWM5 is this LED voltmeter. So it flashes three times for 13 volts and then two or three short flashes which tells you the decimal. So that's about 13.3 I think. Now it's getting quite close to the float voltage set point of 13 and a half volts and when it hits that the controller should go into modulation and then the LED will come on continuously uh, but flickering to indicate that it's uh, reached its target voltage. So as I say no actual sunshine today but I've got this connected up to uh, a big 80 watt panel and there's no load on the battery so the voltage should come up quite quickly. And now the battery has reached float voltage, the target voltage of 13.5 volts. The controller LED is uh, showing that it's modulating so it's doing pulse width modulation. The LED even gives you an indication of the duty cycle. The brighter the LED um, the more energy there is spare and so the more the controller is actually switching off it's kind of back to front but there it is float voltage 13.54 it's not precisely 13.5 well that's due to uh, measurement inaccuracies in the controller. So let's rewind six or seven years ago to my first solar power setup which was very similar to this. It was uh, one of these 12 watt amorphous panels which I bought from Maplin. I think the sun's coming out a bit now. And an old car battery, not this one of course but something very similar. And I just had the panel connected directly to the battery with no charge controller and most of the time it was okay. And then one day in the middle of summer, I noticed that the battery was bubbling furiously and the voltage had got to 16 and a half volts. Now this one's nowhere near that high, but that worried me a little bit. And so I started looking around for a solar charge controller. And what I bought was this. It's the Morningstar SunGuard 4 solar controller. And it's here. It's uh, a 12 volt solar charge controller, pulse width modulation, rated at 4.5 amps. And it's really simple, just four connections, uh, a red lead, which has faded considerably now, 
yellow and two blacks. And this controller worked very well. Uh, I used it probably for about a year. Uh, no more high voltages on the battery. This thing kept the battery voltages to uh, a more reasonable level. Now I've got banana plugs on here so I can directly substitute it in this uh, setup for the PWM5. So let's do that now. And there it is in circuit connected to the solar panel and to the battery at the other end. And you can see that it's holding the battery voltage at a constant, rather high in my opinion, 13.95 volts. But the more I looked at this thing, the more I thought, well, it must be possible to build something like this. There can't be that much inside this small box in terms of the electronics. And so that is what inspired me to design the PWM5. And you can see how uh, a lot of the attributes of the SunGuard SG4 spilled over into the PWM5, like the color coding on the wires, basically a direct copy. The fact that this is PWM, I also went for PWM. Uh, this controller is unusual in that it has common negative. Quite a lot of uh, solar controllers are common positive, and I really didn't like that. I like the common ground connection, so I copied that as well and made the PWM5 common ground. Now, one thing I thought that the uh, Morningstar SG4 lacked was any sort of visual feedback, which is why I included an LED, uh, which tells you all sorts of different things, because I felt it was important to know that the controller was actually doing something, hadn't crashed, was still working, and also could tell you the voltage of the battery without actually having to connect a DVM. Now, one thing that's noticeably different is the form factor. Um, I eventually went for this design wrapped in heat shrink, mainly for reasons of price. But earlier on in the project, I was looking at a similar casing to the SG4. I did buy a number of these uh, potting boxes, which are sort of similar in form factor to the Sun Guard. But I ended up not using them for two reasons, really. They were quite expensive, and also I couldn't work out where the LED would shine through. Either I'd have to drill a hole in the bottom of the box or have the LED actually on the back of the box, but then there'd be a problem if you mounted it on wood or something like that. So although I ended up with uh, the same completely 100% waterproof um, unit, of course I gave myself a lot more work uh, fitting the two pieces of sleeving onto this unit where the sun guard PCB is probably just dropped into that box and then the potting compound is just poured in. Now I had to put on the inner piece of sleeving, the clear piece of sleeving, pour hot glue into both ends of the unit and that caused all manner of problems in its own right. And then I had to fit the outer sleeving with a punched hole there for the LED to shine through and then attach the label. So maybe in hindsight this was the wrong decision, maybe I should have gone with the potting box form factor. I did agonize over this for quite a while and you can see that the printed circuit board was designed in such a size and shape that it would fit into either packaging type. And then there's this external diode. Why did I choose to put the diode, the blocking diode, into the piece of wire external to the unit? Why didn't I put it inside the PWM5 package? Well, the answer to that is so that you could cut it out. The idea is that if your solar panel included its own blocking diode, you could cut the wires at this point here and have no blocking diode in the PWM5 circuitry at all. But then that created a problem for me. Now I've got the charge controller connected to the positive and negative connections of the battery. Now if at the other end I short black and yellow together, it's absolutely fine. Nothing bad happens. And that's because this diode protects the charge controller from a short at this end. And I thought, well, I can't sell these charge controllers without the diode, because if while connecting the positive and negative connections, these two wires touch together, because of the MOSFET's body diode, there would be a high current path from red through to yellow and back round to black which would instantly destroy the MOSFET inside here. So I put this diode in the wire to protect me, the seller, from having these units sent back saying it blew up and it doesn't work and so forth. 
In the manual, my manual, it says you can cut this diode out, but you will void the warranty. Now, interestingly, in the uh, user guide for the SunGuard SG4, in two places it says, do not short circuit the solar array while connected the controller while connected to the controller. This will damage the controller, and it also says it uh, down here as well. Uh, it says here, be very careful not to short circuit the solar array, or the controller will be damaged. Well, that's simply not the case with the PWM5. You can short the solar side of the controller, and there's absolutely no problem at all. So uh, I certainly felt that putting that diode in was absolutely necessary. I did think about using a fuse, but then I thought, no, let's go with a diode. And it serves as the blocking diode as well, if the panel doesn't have one. Now, in an effort to go one better than the SG4, I rated the first version of the PWM5 at 4.8 amps. This is rated at 4.5 amps. I then upgraded that to 6 amps by upgrading the uh, external diode and also putting in a lower on-resistance MOSFET into the unit. Now, as far as I know, Morningstar still sell the SG4 and of course I don't sell the PWM5 anymore so they've won that battle and I think part of the reason is this designed in the USA assembled in Taiwan well of course the PWM5 was designed in England and assembled in England and just ended up taking too long costing too much and that's really what killed it off so now this is going open source and you can build your own so there we are a lot of the design decisions in the PWM5 were heavily influenced by the SunGuard SG4 and I've just noticed that while I've been rabbiting on the sun's come out and we've actually got quite a pleasant day. Cheerio!